Are you headed overseas? Well, here are some gadgets you might want to bring with you. Adorama TV presents Exploring Photography with Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, as some of you know, if you've been following me for the past two years, I've been traveling all around the world and I'd like to share some tips with you about taking care of your gear and some things that you might want to take with you if you go on an international trip. And some of these things are pretty obvious, but others might surprise you. So the first thing I want to talk about, I get a question all the time, is how do you clean the sensor on your camera? Now what I prefer to do always is to take my camera, it doesn't matter if it's a Leica or a Canon or a Nikon, to an authorized service center and have them do it. I don't like touching my sensor and so that's how I clean my sensor. But uh, if there's a dust spot or something on that, what I'll do is I use this little blower. Now this little blower is something that you should absolutely have regardless if you're traveling or not. And one of the things that's very important is do not get a blower with a little brush on the end. You don't want that. Why? Well, as soon as you take your lens off of your camera and you go in there to start doing things, well, those little brushes can break off inside your camera and that is extremely bad news. You don't want to do that. The other thing you want to do is if you're uh, cleaning your sensor, so normally you turn on the in the menu the sensor cleaning, you push the shutter release and the shutter opens and then you can blow off that sensor. Don't do it like this with your camera normal. You don't want to do that because the dust is just going to blow around in there. What you should do is put it on a tripod, make sure it's facing down, and then be very careful. You don't want to jab this way up in there where it hits the sensor. So you need to get underneath there, look at what you're doing, and give it a few gentle blows, let the dust fall out, repeat that, and do it as many times as you need to get that sensor looking nice and clean. The same thing of your lenses. Don't touch the lens itself. Make sure it's facing down so that that dust falls down. It's pretty obvious, but I've seen just so many photographers doing uh, sensor cleaning where they sometimes even have their camera facing up. You don't want to do that. So use a tripod, make sure your camera's facing down, and then don't jab your camera with the little bulb there. All right, another thing that I use a lot, now this one is one of my favorite things. This is a little bicycle tool, and you get these at sporting goods stores. It's got just a few little Allen wrenches, hex wrenches, a uh, little screwdriver, etc. Now the reason that I use this is if you travel a lot in your bag, um, in the luggage, your tripod is going to start shaking loose um, eventually. And so these little screws here that hold the legs nice and tight, they're going to need tightening. And guess what? This will do the trick. You can get in there and you can tighten up those legs just fine. And it also has several tools, so if you need to put on a tripod plate or take that off, that will work just fine. And it's tiny and really lightweight, and it does all kinds of stuff. You'd be surprised at how many times you'll uh, use one of these little bicycle tools. So it's got a screwdriver plus all the little Allen wrenches, and that will help you tighten all of your different uh, parts up on your tripods and those types of things. The other thing I would have to mention is always, I always travel with a Leatherman because you just use these constantly for fixing and slicing, etc. So it sort of goes without saying, but I thought I'd throw it in here anyway. A Leatherman is just something I just wouldn't travel without. All right, the other thing, when you have a, uh, a video camera or a charger, it doesn't matter, make sure you get a dual voltage charger. Almost everything that's sold these days is dual voltage, but you need to make sure you check because if you plug in a 110 volt uh, appliance into a 220 volt, it's going to blow up. So uh, these guys will work with both European, South American, North American. It'll work just fine, but you're going to need to be able to convert all your plugs whoa, into different plug types. And so what you can do, if you're lucky, you can get plugs that have different shapes, sort of like this, so they'll work in different parts of the world. You might be able to get one that has even a cigarette lighter adapter. Some of the chargers have that, which is really nice. You might find some that are USB. But if you don't, if you only have one kind of plug, then you need to get some adapters so that you can make sure you plug in all your stuff all over the world. Now these, make sure you do that before you leave uh, because sometimes they're hard to find those or the ones that you do find aren't very good quality. As a matter of fact, here's one that's not very good quality that I bought. If you look closely, you can see that this is all nasty and corroded. And if I plug that in, it'd probably light on fire. So I just kept it so I could show you that these guys, 
if they're cheap, aren't necessarily so good. And that's the kind of stuff you find at a normal, maybe a little market outside of a city somewhere. So get the good stuff and that will really save you in the long run. Some people have a big block that they can flip out different adapters and stuff. I don't recommend those. I recommend the smaller ones because if you're in an airport or something and you have the big block, usually the airport outlets have been used so many times that they just won't stay in, they just fall out. But these guys, they're not that bad. All right, if you're in a hotel, there's a little trick that I use all the time. We've seen these a million times and we're thinking, why do they put these in hotels now, these shower caps? Well, I always steal them because in a pinch, if there's a rainy day outside and I need some extra cover for my camera, well, guess what? The shower cap is now a rain cover for my gear. And I use that all the time. They're absolutely free. You paid for the room, so why not get the extra shower cap camera protection um, and they're really small and tight when you're done you can just sort of throw them away so it's a really inexpensive way to protect your gear in a pinch the other thing is if you're working in really humid places the southeast united states in the summer maybe some swamps if you're in south america in the jungle etc what can happen to lenses is that humidity can get inside the lens and then fungus can start to grow. Now, the bad thing about fungus in a lens is it doesn't show up right away. Sometimes it can take two or three or four or five years before you start to see the effects of the fungus, but it affects uh, how much light passes through the lens. You'll start to see some vignetting, soft focus, the resolution decreases. You don't want that. It can really hurt your lens and eventually it can get between the lens elements and actually crack the lens. If you spend a lot of money on a nice lens, you want that lens to last 10, 20, 30 years, a long, long time. You don't want to have to cash those in every year or two. So a few things to do with a lens in wet weather. The first thing you want to do, as soon as you're done, make sure you dry off the lens with a nice lint-free cloth. You can use your lens cleaning uh, cloth. Make sure it's dry as fast as possible. If you have a zoom lens or something that focuses in and out like this, see how that extends out of the barrel, comes back in? What's gonna happen inside the lens is there's air that's trapped. So make sure that you zoom in and out a few times to get that humid air out of your lens. And the other thing that you want to do if you've been shooting in humid weather for an extended period of time, you don't need to do this if you're just shooting out in the rain for a couple of hours, but if you're on a trip for an extended period of time, get just a little Ziploc bag, put your lens inside there, and then get a little packet of silica gel. You can get these in a new pair of shoes and a million things. We throw these away all the time. Make sure you get a nice new one, stick that in the bag, and then seal this up so it's airtight. You want to make sure it's absolutely airtight and then that will suck all the moisture out of the lens. Now one precaution, if you have some silica gel that is old and it's already soaked up the moisture, if you do that, it's gonna do the opposite. It's actually gonna put moisture into the lens. So make sure you have a nice new silica gel or else you could be causing problems where you didn't have any originally. All right, a couple more things, just for the practicality of travel. If you're doing scenic photography, you're gonna be shooting at night. Make sure you have a nice flashlight because if you don't, you might not be able to see where you're going or what the adjustments need to be made on your camera. So a flashlight is invaluable. And if you're shooting video or you're on an airplane, you wanna have great earbuds. Now I recommend, and these are sort of expensive. In fact, I'm not gonna lie, they're very expensive. These are Shure headphones and I put a link in the video. The difference between these headphones and other headphones is A, they're extremely high quality, so you can actually do audio monitoring for professional video, and they're not like earbuds that just go into your ear. They actually have these little replaceable um, tips on there. They go into the ear and they seal the ear, so it's a sound isolating uh, technology. And so what that does, if you're on an airplane, if you're in a busy airport, if you're in a coffee shop, you can't actually hear anything except what's in the headphones. It's, they're like earplugs, but with the advantage of really high quality headphones. The other thing is if you're working with somebody or traveling with somebody, get one of these little guys. It's just a little splitter. That way you can both watch the same video, watch the same movie, or make sure you're uh, monitoring the same audio if you're shooting video or something. And that can just go right into the case. But I highly recommend these guys. These are the Shure headphones. They are expensive, but if you're doing pro work, make sure you do that. Also, two more things to remember. Make sure you have a nice lens cleaning cloth. 
And then once you get these dirty, don't use soap on them. Just rinse them out in normal, clean water. Let them hang out to dry and they'll be good to go again. And then if you're shooting around dirty areas, if there's mud, if there's uh, hair from animals, be really diligent about your camera case because anything that gets in your case, guess what? You're essentially putting that on your camera. If you have dogs or cats, if you've got pets, you know how much animal hair can get into things. So just really be diligent because anything that's in your camera bag is going to be on your camera. Okay, well that's a lot of stuff, but just some small things that can make a big difference if you're taking an extended trip overseas and doing some photography. And these are some tricks that I have learned along the way. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I hope this helped you out. Remember, if you want to know more about scenic photography, travel photography, street photography, studio photography, shooting video, any of that kind of stuff, you can find it absolutely free. Tons of tutorials at the Adorama Learning Center. And as always, make sure you subscribe. That way you don't miss a single episode. Thanks so much for joining me, and I will see you next time. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.